In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate direct material variances in a standard costing environment. We will look at price, yield, and mix variances. We will use an Excel example to calculate all of these variances, calculate the percentage impact, and explain what each of these variances mean. So watch till the end if you are interested in knowing more about this topic. Let's take a look at the example we will follow today in Excel. So this table represents the raw materials required to produce one unit of finished good. So you can imagine if you work in an organization which manufactures products, you can think about the product you make, and these are the raw materials that go into making those products. You can also think of any other example, for example, let's say a cake. So let's say these are the five ingredients that go into making a cake. So we have the quantities of each ingredient or each raw material, quantities in kgs. The standard quantity is represented in this column, whereas the actual quantity that was actually used is represented in this column. Then we also have the standard price or cost of the material. So standard price is in this column. And then the actual price where uh, when we buy the material from the vendor, the actual price that it turned out to be is in this column. And in this column, we have the price difference. We will look at the total material variance. What really is total material variance? It is the standard cost minus actual cost. So in this case, it will be your standard quantity multiplied by standard price. That will give you your standard cost minus actual quantity multiplied by the actual price. Very simple. So I have this calculation done here, as you can see. Standard quantity multiplied by standard price gives you your standard cost and actual quantity multiplied by your actual price gives you actual cost. And in this way, you have the variance by material. So if I copy the formula all the way down, you have a total material variance of $164.75, which is negative or unfavorable because your standard cost is 510, but your actual cost is much higher, which represents an adverse or unfavorable variance but this is the total variance. Now you can see the total variance by uh, raw material. However, you need more information. You wanna know what is the impact of change in price or cost of the material? What is the impact of yield and mix? Let's start filling up our total variance summary. So we already have calculated the total variance, which is $164.75. Now, as we calculate price and usage variances, including yield and mix, our total should match this total variance, okay? Now, let's look at price variance. First of all, how is price variance calculated? A price variance is the difference of standard price and actual price multiplied by actual quantity used. So for raw material one, the standard price is $2. The actual price, actual price is $2 in 10 cents. So the actual price is higher by 10 cents we have the price difference here, and we multiply it by the actual quantity, which is 110 kgs. And in this way, you get a price variance of $11. Again, I will copy the formula all the way down, and this gives me my total price variance, which is $54.75. So I will update my summary of variances here. Now I can link this to this cell where I've calculated my price variance. And I have the first number, $54.75. We still have a gap of $110 to explain the total variance. Towards the end, I'm going to talk about what each of these variances mean. So keep following the calculation and we'll get to the explanation in a moment. So price variance is more uh, reflective of the cost or rate at which the material was bought. Now we have to look at the usage or the quantity used how efficient we were in using that quantity. And this is reflected by the usage variances, which have, uh, which are further divided into yield and mix variances. So first let's take a look at yield variance. Now let me explain yield variance in general terms and then we will get to the calculation. So yield variance really ref reflects that in order to produce the output that was desired, in this case, we are only talking about one unit of finished good. It could be 10, 100, this does not matter. And in order to produce this one unit, our standards uh, suggest that we should use 200 kgs of, um, of raw material. However, actually we are using 230 units of raw material. So in reality, we are about 15% higher in consumption. Right? 
we are using 15% more material to produce the same output. This is negative or unfavorable because we are required to consume more quantity to produce the same output. Yield is really output divided by input reflected in percentage terms. Now for the calculation of yield variances, let's look at the formula quickly. So yield variance is your standard units used minus actual units used at standard mix times standard cost per unit. So what does mix represent? Mix represents really the percentage of each raw material used as a percent of total raw material quantity. So if I talk about standard mix in this example, if I quickly calculate that, for example, for raw material one, the standard mix or the percentage used is 50%. And similarly, we can calculate this for all the raw materials. However, actual mix may be different because we have used 110 kgs out of a total of 230 kgs, which means the actual mix for raw material one is roughly 48%. Now, why is this important? This is important because each raw material has different standard and actual prices. And depending on if we use more of one type of raw material compared to the other, our total actual cost will change. For example, you can see here that raw material three is the most expensive one. If we use more of raw material three, even if our total quantities are the same, and there is a shift between raw material three and raw material one, for example, this will result in unfavorable variance because we are using more of a high value raw material. But that is mixed variance. So when explaining yield variance, we want to isolate or ignore the impact of the mix change. Since standard is always our base, we want to bring our actual quantity back to standard mix. So yield variance is really your standard quantity minus actual quantity, but at standard mix. What does that mean? That means you will take your total actual quantity, but you will multiply it by the percentage of standard quantity. We know in case of raw material one, the standard mix is 50%. You could do it this way as well. You take 230 multiplied by 50%, which was our standard mix. And again, you arrive at 115. Freeze the cell here. So the yield variance will be your actual uh, standard quantity minus actual quantity times standard price per unit. Now an important point here that the usage variance, the cost that you will be using to calculate variance will always be standard price per unit. You will ignore the actual price per unit because actual price per unit is considered in price variance. That's where you consider what is the impact of the actual price being different from the standard price. But once you get to the usage variance, you always use standard price to calculate the impact of quantity changes because there you are focused on the impact of quantity changes, not rate changes, okay? So we have the yield variance for raw material one calculated. I'll simply copy the formula down. And here you have all of our yield variances. As you can see, the yield variances total is $76.50. So I'm going to reference this cell in our summary. And now we have $33.50 left to explain, which will be explained by the mix variance. Finally, it's time for the mix variance. So mix variance is calculated in a very similar way as yield variance. There is a small change in the formula. So as you can see, we had standard units used minus actual units at standard mix multiplied by standard cost for the yield variance. In the mix variance, you will bring this part of the formula actual units at standard mix. So this is the same, but this time you have actual units used instead of standard units used, right? So both the calculation of yield and mix require your actual units at standard mix. However, in the mix variance, you have actual units at standard mix minus actual units used times standard cost per unit. Now in terms of calculation in Excel, again, this column is exactly the same as the column we had for yield variance, this column. So you can actually copy all of it exactly to this column. Actual quantity at standard mix, we've already discussed this. And then you compare that with the actual quantity. This time you will use the actual quantity from this column. So if you copy it all the way down, you have all the quantities and the calculation is 
actual quantity at standard mix minus actual quantity times standard cost per unit. And you can see the total in this case is $33.50, which is exactly our gap. So here you go, all of your material variances are now matching the total variance of $164.75. You have $0 difference and your total variance of $164.75 can be explained by price, yield and mix variance. Now to explain what does all of this mean, to understand this better, let's understand what is the difference in percentage terms. So in order to calculate the percentage difference, we will use the total variance of $164.75 divide by standard cost. Remember your base would always be the standard cost because if none of the variances happened, if we performed exactly as per standard, our actual cost would have been 510 not 674 right so how much did we change or how much did how much are we different by can be calculated by dividing the variance the total variance by the standard cost so we arrive at 32 percent which means our actual costs are 32 percent higher than our standard cost and here we also have the split so if i look at the price variance of 54 dollars and 75 cents and divided by our standard costs, you can see that 11% of the total 32% is driven by the change in prices of the raw material. And if I copy the formula down to yield and mix, we can also see that 15% of the variance is driven by yield, which actually is quite obvious because 230 units compared to uh, 230 kgs compared to 200 kgs is a 15% increase. But we also have unfavorable mix impact of 7%, which means we are using raw materials which are higher in cost a little more than raw materials which are relatively lower in the total cost. And we saw that when we did the mix analysis. So what do we do about it? Well, the price variance usually in organizations is linked to uh, people who are responsible for purchasing or negotiating with the vendors. Um, so looking at the 11% increase, we have to find out whether this is a general market price increase, which was really beyond the control of the purchasing manager or the purchasing manager or purchasing, purchasing team could do something about it. And nevertheless, we will ask them to look for alternative suppliers. If it's possible, we can buy the raw materials from different suppliers who still offer the same or better quality, but at a lower price. They can also negotiate with the same vendor and ask for a price drop. On the other hand, the usage variances are usually related to the production team, the manufacturing team, because this deals with the use of quantity. So it looks like to produce the same unit where the standard suggested to use 200 kgs, they used 230, so they used more quantity than was suggested. If the standards were correct and based on historical information, something has gone wrong. Uh, why are they using more quantity? This could be also driven by the quality of raw material, right? So these variances are sometimes linked with each other. If the quality of raw material is bad, it may end up the production team using more of the raw material to produce the same output because they have scrap, higher scrap and lower yield. Or it could also be that uh, the performance really is not as efficient as, as it used to be driven by many possible changes. This is something that as a controller or financial analyst, you will have to review and understand with the production team. And thirdly, the mix change, which is really a change in recipe. So use of one raw material more than the others. So again, what is driving that change? And import, what is important is for the production team to know the impact of these changes, for them to know that if they use more of a raw material, which is more expensive compared to a cheaper material, this will result in much higher costs. So as long as they are aware and they try to maintain the mix as, uh, as per standard or even improve it, then they will be saving on costs right, instead of having higher costs. But in this example, all three drivers of material variances are negative. And so the purchasing team and the operations team have some work to do in order to understand how to bring the costs back to standards. Going back to our original chart of variances, of course, today we have only looked at direct material variances, but all of these different variances impact 
a business and its profit and loss statement. If you want to have a good understanding of uh, how the standard costs and manufacturing variances are reflected on the income statement of an organization, check out the link in the description below. I have a video related to that. Also, uh, we talked about price variance today, the material price variance. It's also referred to as purchase price variance in many organizations. I have a detailed video on the calculation of purchase price variance and also how SAP calculates those variances and what are the posting entries, what are the accounting entries related to the purchase price variance. Make sure you check out that video as well if that is something that you are interested in. If you are an accounting and finance professional or student, make sure you subscribe. And if you found this video useful or helpful, I would really appreciate if you hit thumbs up and let me know you liked it. And I always love comments coming in. So if you have any questions specifically related to this topic or any other accounting and finance topic, let me know in the comment section. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.